Welcome to Zen Dream Chronicles. Tonight, we bring you Firefly Nights by H. Schulze, a heartwarming tale of the magically precious moments shared between a father and a daughter on a warm Texas summer night. Please remember to listen in a quiet and safe place, away from vehicles or heavy machinery. Our content is created for relaxation purposes only. I'm delighted to have you with us as we embark on a tranquil journey together. If you like our stories, consider joining our Zen family by subscribing. Now, let's focus on your breathing. Inhale deeply through your nose, counting to four as you fill your lungs with refreshing air. Hold your breath for a moment, if you are comfortable, and then exhale slowly through your mouth, counting to six as you release the breath. Good. Repeat this pattern a few more times, allowing your breath to become a soothing rhythm. Inhale four counts, hold for a moment, and exhale six counts, two, three, four, five. Feel any tension in your body melt away with each breath, leaving you feeling relaxed and at peace. As you continue to breathe, imagine the soft glow of fireflies beginning to light up the evening around you. Their tiny lights flicker like stars on the ground, creating a magical and inviting atmosphere. With each breath, absorb the tranquil energy of these fireflies. Their soft, radiant light fills you with a sense of serenity and calm, just as it does in the Texas countryside. And now, you have arrived. As you listen to the words of tonight's story, allow yourself to be carried away into a world of imagination and wonder. The story will transport you to new places where you can explore, dream, and find comfort in the narrative. When you are ready, Close your eyes and let the story unfold before you, knowing that you are in a state of calm and relaxation, ready to enjoy our journey. Firefly Nights a heartfelt fiction story written by H. Schulze. Dad, I love the sounds of summer, said the young girl as she sipped on her bedtime tea. The father smirked and exclaimed, If you listen closely, you can almost hear music. He began to snap to the beat and sing 
as somehow the fond lyrics of Ben E. King's song, Stand By Me, fit in perfect harmony. The girl joined in, swaying and singing the familiar tune. The song came to its end with the two of them dancing and hugging. You're so fun. I love you, Dad. He said, you mean the world to me, little bear. And they sat in a contented silence both smiling, their thoughts on the rhythm and the cadence that formed from the musicians of the night. The air was moist and heavy after a long day of June sun. Still, the heat's worth it when you get to see a sunset like the one they witnessed from their Texas country porch. A vibrant painting of pinks and purples filled the sky as twilight set in for the evening. The last ochre rays of light seeped through the array of colorful wildflowers as the sun dipped below the field. Indian paintbrushes and black-eyed Susans became illuminated with a warm and heavenly opulence that glowed from the earth. It was the perfect ending to the perfect day with my perfect little princess. And now it's time for bed, sweetheart. No, daddy, just let me stay a little longer, at least till the light bugs come out, please. He giggled and thought for a moment, as normally his parental autopilot would kick in with no exceptions. Only tonight seemed different. He pondered on the memories he had with his parents, growing up in that very house, sometimes on magical nights like tonight. They would be a bit more lenient. He recalled the nights that he would chase the light bugs and catch them in a little jar. He thought to himself, There's just some moments that brain hits record, and this is one of them. I want to hold on to this one for a very long time. Dad? The father realized he had been caught captive in his thoughts for a few minutes and decided to play it off with his daughter. What? You're still here? Why haven't you gone to bed? He poked with a playful grin. Dad, please? He bent down and gave her a kiss on the forehead. Okay, Goober, I'll be right back. He got up and went inside for a moment. As the daughter sat on the porch and looked at the magical night scene, she saw her first spark of bioluminescence floating through the humid indigo air. She had a strong conviction that they weren't just bugs, but they were actually fairies. And as her eyelids became heavy, she imagined that if she followed one, she may come upon a world of colorful, magic creatures. She laid down on the bench as her imagination soared on the wings of a pegasus. And with each blink of her heavy eyelids, the porch transformed into a portal to a magical realm. The gentle breeze carried her spirit into a realm where mystical creatures roamed freely. She saw unicorns grazing on fields of rainbow-colored flowers, their majestic horns glinting under the moonlight. Nearby, Playful gnomes and mischievous sprites 
engaged in an elaborate game of hide-and-seek among the toadstool houses that dotted the landscape. The night sky itself seemed a lie, with constellations taking on the form of ancient celestial beings. Whispering tales of forgotten legends. Shooting stars streaked across the heavens, leaving behind trails of stardust that illuminated the path ahead. And as she ventured deeper into this dream world, she encountered a luminous waterfall cascading from a crystal clear lake. The water was not ordinary. It sparkled with the brilliance of a thousand diamonds and held the secrets of the universe. She approached the edge of the pool and dipped her fingers into the sparkling waters, feeling a surge of rejuvenation and boundless energy with newfound courage and wisdom, the young girl continued her journey, guided by the soft glow of the fairies that flitted around her. It was a world where dreams and reality intertwined, where the impossible became possible. And she knew that this fairy tale dream had to hold the key to unlocking her imagination. And this enchanting realm made her spirit soar free as she embraced the wonders of this night. The father stepped back outside and realized that his daughter had fallen asleep on the bench. He gently reached down and rubbed the back of her neck in a slow, circular motion. She cracked open her eyes, blinking the sleep out to look up at him. Dad, I followed a light bug and went to the fairy world, she exclaimed. With a heartfelt grin, he said, Would you like to catch one? And held up an old mason jar and butterfly net. She jumped up in pure excitement and ran joyfully out to the field. Don't get too wild now, you'll scare them all away, he said as he ran to catch up with her. The two danced around as the night air filled with their laughter. One by one, the pair swiped at the tiny orbs as they flickered and fled. The luminous radiance of the natural magic surrounding them sparkled in their eyes. And with each swish of the net, nearly catching but just missing, the father and daughter were growing a bit tired. Several minutes passed, and they'd had no luck thus far. Their breath came fast and heavy. Maybe we'll catch one another night. It's getting late, my little light bug. She took a few deep breaths and let out a deflated sigh. Maybe you're right. As she looked down with disappointment, she was startled as her father's hand snapped next to her head with super power speed. Her eyes were huge from the scare, but even more so from excitement. Did you catch one? He carefully placed his cup hand over her jar, and a little black bug dropped down to the bottom. He secured the lid that he had poked some holes into when he had gone inside. Fairies are ugly, she judged as she examined at eye level. 
He smiled and said, It's what's inside that matters. The two waited for a moment, and the jar began to shine. Simultaneously, they let out shouts of excitement. The greenish light slowly pulsed through the glass and softly lit their faces up in the dark of night. They sat there for a moment in the grass, still catching their breath from the hunt, soaking in the light that surrounded them. For a time, they sat in silent admiration. The two had become entranced once again with the melodic chirps of the crickets and frogs. Glowing in sync with the music, the tiny insect intermittently brightened the space around it. Staring at the jar, the father once again drifted off into deep thought. Doing this, he realized he was going to have to break the news to his little girl, that eventually she would have to let this little creature go. As he began to tell her, she reached for the mason jar. No, we worked so hard to get it. I love my little light fairy. Please don't make me let it go. He tried to explain how letting it go would be letting it live. A profound moment hit him as he realized something deeply touching. His thoughts were now placed on the future. You know, sweetheart, you're a lot like this little bug here, he said. Puzzled, she looked up and asked him, I am? Yes, my little light fairy, all of my life. I worked hard, and I'm convinced it was all for you. You're the one thing in this world that I could ever love so very much. Your little light, your soul shines so bright. And one day when you grow up, I'll have to let you go too. Oh, Daddy, I'll never leave you. Well, that's just how life works, sweetheart. One day, you've got to go out into that dark world and shine your light. That's how we make the world a better place. We have to share it with everyone and help illuminate the right paths. Spread your warmth to those who have gone cold. It's important to know how powerful you are, sweetheart, and it's our duty in this life to make the world a bit better. Even if it's just a smile to a stranger. First, she pouted, and then began to discern the words her father was saying. Looking up, she saw tears in her father's eyes. Are you okay, Daddy? He replied, Yes, sweetheart, you are everything to me. I'm so glad we got to spend this extra time together. But... It is way past your bedtime now. Come on. But wait, Dad. We have to let it go. We have to say goodbye. My light fairy has to be free so she can light up the world. I don't want her to die in here. The child looked down and grabbed the lid, slowly twisting it off. She stopped for a moment. Will she come back? She asked. The father replied, Well, honey, I can't promise that. A big smile of acceptance came across her face, and she twisted the lid off. And with newfound excitement, she launched the creature back into the wild. As the insect began to fly away, she waited and then said, 
You know, Dad, I don't think I'm like that bug at all. You may have to let me go, but you'll always love me, and I'll always love you. And just so you know, I'll always come back to light up your day, too. She paused for a moment in jest. But I'll never be as creepy looking as that thing, either. He laughed so hard he began to cry a little bit again. He bent down to her level, grasped her shoulders, and looked into her eyes. You know, kid, I think you're smarter than I am, he snickered. They shared a good belly laugh together. She hopped up on his back and he began to carry her into the comfort of their little country home while both were reminiscing on the magic of the day and once more singing to the familiar tune of the night. This has been Firefly Nights on Zen Dream Chronicles. We wish you the sweetest sleep. Until next time, good night.